Multi-agent has been a trending topic. There are already projects like MetaGPT or ChatDev that explore and demonstrate great results to deliver complex software. In short, those are frameworks that allow you to create a group of agents to solve complex tasks together. And if you want to learn more about multi-agent frameworks, you can check the other video I made. But on the other hand, there are also challenges. One is very hard for users to give agent feedback. So quite often, only after the agents finish the whole process, then I realize what they deliver is only 50% of what I want. And there's no easy way for me to give feedback to let them iterate. And second, with those frameworks, even though you can get two agents to work together on a given task, you can't really add a third or fourth agents into the conversation. But when we think about some real world tasks like strategic planning, it normally involves more than just two person to deliver best results. However, Microsoft just announced a new multi-agent framework called AutoJet, which solves those two problems really well. Introduce some unique concepts like user proxy agent as well as group chat manager. So user proxy agent introduce an easy way for us to define human feedback point during the process. It is basically an agent that can talk to other assistant agents on behalf of users. But when needed, it can ask human for the inputs. For example, if the user asks agent to create a stock price chart for Tesla, then it will trigger a conversation for the agent to complete this task. The human can give feedback if they see something wrong and then the agent will start iterating. This gives end user a lot more control in terms of plan and final output that the agent should execute on. And the second concept is group chat manager. This is how you can coordinate multiple agents to collaborate on a given goal. It's almost like a chat room you can create for as many agents as you want. If we take a use case of strategic planning with framework like ChatDev, they allow you to introduce two agents into the conversation. It could be a CEO and product manager. But with AutoGen, you can introduce more agents into the conversation to provide different perspectives, like data analyst as well as engineer. So when you think about a use case like content production, you can create different type of chat rooms and then connect together as a content production pipeline. And if you're thinking about a business consulting use case, you can even create a chat rooms with different domain experts in, and they can chime in the conversation when they see fit, as long as you define the role of each agent very well. With those two things, I can actually create very complex multi-agent applications that deliver consistent results. So let's first install AutoGen on your computer. I'll create a folder and open it in Visual Studio Code. Install the AutoGen package. Create a special file called OAI config list. This is a special file that AutoGen will use to import the list of OpenAI API keys. Once you finish, let's create a new file called basic.py. Inside basic.py, we will create the most basic use case where it will simulate a conversation between an assistant and user proxy. So we'll import the library first and then import the OpenAI API key from the file we just created. We'll create an assistant agent, give a name assistant, as well as a user proxy agent. And if you remember, user proxy agent is like the agent that will talk to other assistant on behalf of user and will also ask for user input when it's needed. It is also play the role of running the Python code generated by the assistants. So here I will do user proxy agent, name is user proxy, and code execution config is coding. This basically means all the Python code generated will be saved under a folder called coding. So later there will be a folder created here. And once we define those two agents, I can trigger a conversation by user proxy agent with initial chat, send a message, plot a chart of NVIDIA and Tesla stock price. I will save this and open terminal, Python basic.py. So you can see the user proxy send a message to the assistant about this instruction that we just gave. And then the assistant actually write the whole Python code to get the latest stock data from Yahoo Finance of NVIDIA and Tesla, as well as very detailed instruction about how they should run this app. And at the bottom, you can see that it shows a message, please provide feedback to the assistant. So here I can actually type in a feedback to the agent. But if I don't have any feedback, I can just click enter to skip. And here I actually just want to run this to see the results. And boom, you can see that it actually generates a chart based on the real-time data. But if I want, I can also just close this and then give further feedback to the agent. Please plot the percentage change instead of the price and click enter. Now you can see it actually changed the chart from dollar change to percentage change instead. And I can close it again and then give it more instruction. Now plot bad to the dollar change instead as it look better and also add Apple to the stock list. If there are error during the code execution, it will actually go through a self-healing process where the assistant will give some feedback about how can they fix this code. And now you can see a new chart just created based on multiple iteration of my feedback. When I feel like the task has been finished, I can just type exit. Then it will finish the conversation and the code generated will be under this coding folder. So this is a very good example of even just a one basic agent with proper human input and feedback. It can actually provide much better user experience. And this type of user feedback is particularly useful for coding agent. Because there are a lot of rooms for error in software development process. So next, I want to quickly showcase how can we use Group Chat Manager to create a coding agent where it will involve three different agents, the user proxy agent, the coder, as well as the product manager. So I will create another file called codeagent.py. And inside that file, I will first import the libraries and again, try to get an API key to define the config list. And here I will add a request timeout to make it bigger because sometimes during the code generation, the time can be a bit longer than 60 seconds. And then I will define three different agents, the user proxy agent, where human input modes to be always, which means it will always ask 
ask human for confirmation and then a coder agent as well as a product manager agent. And for the product manager agent, I have a special system prompt. It will help break down the initial idea into well scope requirement for the coder and do not involve in future conversation or error fixing. The reason I add this part is to make sure product managers only chime in when it's needed, which is breaking down the requirements. And after that, I will create a group chat, which involves three different agents and a group chat manager who will coordinate this conversation here. And in the end, I will use user proxy agent to trigger a task, which is build a classic and basic pawn game with two players in Python. So I will try to run Python code agent of py in terminal. As you can see here, the product manager agent will first they create the requirement doc based on the pawn game idea and then give it to coder. Then the coder will generate the game here. And after that, it will ask me for the human input. So I can give feedback at this point, but here I want to run it first. So I click enter. It will give me this uh, interface that is already working. But what I want to add is scoreboard so that it can see the score of each user. So I'll close this and then give a feedback. Everything looks good. Just add a scoreboard for both users. I click enter. So coder actually iterate the code based on the feedback I provided. So I will click enter again. And now you can see at top, it actually have a scoreboard for the each user. And if I have more requirements, I can just close this game and add more. And last, I also want to show you how can you create some complicated use case, like content generation pipeline, where you can create two group chats, one for research and then another for content generation. I will go back to the Visual Studio code, create a new file called contentagent.py. Inside, I will import a list of different libraries that we're going to use. Here you can see, I actually import a list of different Lanching library. That's because I'm going to use the Lanching library to do some map reduce summary for the research purpose. Once we import those libraries, we will import the API keys. And because we are using both Lanchain and Autogen, we will use this three lines code. We will firstly create a research function, which will collect as many information as possible based on the research topic. And then we'll do another function for the content writing, which is a group chat for content writing purpose. And in the end, we will stitch together both research and content writing. So let's dive into them one by one for the research function. Autogen actually support function calling. So we'll create a few different functions for the agent to use. Firstly, we'll create a search function, which is using the serper API key to get search results from Google. So we'll define the API endpoint. The body will be the query that user want to search about, the header, including your API key, and then try to get a response. And after that, we'll create a scraping function based on the URL. So we'll give a header as well as the request body, which is URL that we want to script. We'll turn the response into JSON format and then send a post request to browserless. Here we are using browserless as a scripting service. And once we get the content response back, we'll use beautiful soup to get the text. And if the content is very big, we'll trigger another function to summarize a large web page into a small one so that we can fit it within the large language model context window. And inside a summary function, this is where we'll use the chain. So we'll split the big content into small chunks. And for each chunk, we will use large language model to do a summary. And we will use a load summarize chain, which is a out-of-box chain defined by chain for summarization. Once we create these three functions, we can stitch together for a research function. So here is how we can define an agent with function calling in Autogen. So I will define the large language model config for researcher. Inside, I can define the list of functions, which is specific for the Google search as well as script, which is two functions that I defined above. And for each one, you will give the name of the function, the description, as well as the inputs. And if you want to learn more about function calling, you can also check out the other video I made. And after that, I will refer to the config list that we defined above. And once we did that, to create an assistant agent called researcher. It has a special system prompt, research about given query, collect as many information as possible and generate detailed research results with loads of technical details and all the reference link attached and also add terminate to the end of the research report. The purpose of the last part is this is how we actually define the human feedback point because we can define the user proxy agent in a way that if the message includes special words like terminate, then the human input will be needed and we will define it in the user proxy agent here. So I'll give the name user proxy. So I'll first define the termination message with this part. This basically means if any of the message including words terminate, then it will require human input mode. And you can check out their documentation for more details. But basically, human input mode have three different modes. One is always, which means every time a user proxy agent receive a message, it will ask for human input. Or it can be terminate, which means it will only ask for human input when the terminate words is triggered or never. And then I will also define the function map for the search and scripting function we defined above. And once we did that, we can trigger a conversation between the user proxy agent and researcher for the search query. And after that, I will also add some special code here, which will basically send a new message to the researcher, give me the the research report that just generated again, return only the report and reference link. And the purpose of this is that so that we can make sure the last message is the actual research report that we want and then return the research reports. And we can quickly test it out. So I will trigger this research function. What is Microsoft Autogen? Before you run it, making sure you add a new file.env and add your OpenAI API key here. Then I will open terminal run Python content agent.py. So you can see it starts searching for the results and scraping. And it will scraping multiple different websites to get as many information as possible. After multiple rounds of research, 
research, you can see the researcher actually generate a research report with all the information that it found. And this message include a word terminate, which trigger this user input action. And now if I click enter, it should trigger the next few actions that I, which is asking the researcher to summarize their report again. So I will click enter and you can see that it sent out a new message, give me the research reports that just generate. And here will be the results that we get from calling the research function that we created above. So this is working well. And next we want to create a write content function, which will be given two input. One is the research material that we got from the research function, as well as the topic that the user want to write about. And here again, we will create a group chat with multiple different agents. One agent is called editor. Define the structure of a short blog post based on the material provided by the researcher and give it to the writer to write the blog post. And the second will be a writer assistant agent whose role is a professional AI blogger writing a blog post about AI based on the structure provided by the editor as well as the feedback received from reviewer. And after two rounds of content iteration, add terminate to the end of message. And then the reviewer assistant who will be basically critique the content generated by writer and give feedback. After two rounds of content iteration, add terminate to the end of message. And in the end, we will add this uh, user proxy agent. And again, we will do the same thing about adding the terminate word and create a group chat for all those agents that we just defined above. In the end, trigger the conversation by user proxy agent with a message, write a blog about the topic. And here is the research material. And we'll do the same thing to get the latest written content. So that's pretty much it. All we need to do now is just connect the research function as well as the content generation function together. I will create a new large language model config for content assistant, which have access to the two different functions that we create above. One is the research and another is the write content. We define the writing assistant with a special prompt UI writing assistant. You can use research function to collect latest information about a given topic and then use write content function to write very well written content. And we will define a user proxy agent with a function map of the two functions above. And in the end, we'll trigger this conversation, write a blog about auto gen multi AI agent framework. So let's try this out. Okay, it will return this research report for me to review, which looks pretty good. So I'm going to give go ahead and click enter. The writing assistant takes those research results, trigger the write content function. And inside the write content function, the editor will generate a structure of the content. And then the writer will take those structure to write a blog post, after which the reviewer will critique the content and give some suggestion for improvement. And in the end, the writer actually generate a really well written article based on the research results and multiple critic. And reviewer also trigger the terminated word because he also thinks the content looks pretty good and no more changes needed. And at this point, I can either give more feedback if I want, or I can just click enter to finish this task. As you can see here, with AutoGen, we can create a really powerful content generation pipeline. You can also tweak the same workflow to be other use cases like LeadGen, where you have one group chat for doing leads research about a given company or people, and then have SDR to draft the outreach campaign based on those research results. So this is Microsoft AutoGen. There are a lot more use cases that I didn't really cover here, and you can dive into more on their GitHub repo. I'm very keen to see what type of multi-agent applications that you start creating. So comment below about interesting use case. I will continue posting different interesting AI projects. So please consider giving me a subscribe if you enjoy this content. Thank you and I see you next time.